Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ryan the Retrograde with a special, I guess you could call it, emergency report. I decided that I would record this episode, a solo show, and send it into John so he could quickly get it up on his channel as soon as possible. And you may have seen the headlines on Rorate Chaley, may have been on another website, um, I know it was discussed on Return to Tradition's YouTube channel, and they were very doomy headlines. Quote, suppression of the Latin mass, unquote. Quote, suborum pontificum finished, unquote. Well, Taylor Marshall issued his opinion today, and, and let me backtrack a little bit. Whenever I hear these doomish, or see these doomish headlines about this is the end of the Latin mass, <laughs> I always take this stuff with a grain of salt. I think this is now the fourth, maybe the fifth time that Francis is just about to cancel the Latin Mass. And <laughs> all previous times, it's been totally 100% fake news. So of course, if I see this, my opinion is going to be likely 100% fake news. Um, and that's why I, ignore, I don't bother to read these doom headlines when it comes to Sumorum Pontificum, because I don't think this stuff is, it's, it's not worth your time. First off, at this point in time, 100% speculation. And number two, even if it's true, there is nothing that you can do right now. Nothing. And I think that these, these sorts of what I call doom trad and chicken little trad, these sorts of articles, they don't help anybody. If you're susceptible to having a, a, a doom trad or a chicken little trad psychology, this is bad for you. And if you're not, if you're a glad trad, then you just laugh at this stuff and you're like, I'm not going to worry. What, who, what, me worry? Alfred E. Newman. So uh, that being said, I decided to watch the uh, Taylor Marshall take on it today, which his take was quite good. Um, the last time that Francis was just about to cancel the mass, the lat mass, I think it was six months ago, and John and I did a show about it. And my take on it back then was... More or less the same take now. Nothing will happen. But at least this time I watched this, uh, this Taylor Marshall. And uh, he more or less is on the same page that, that John and I are on. That namely, whatever Francis does to quote-unquote repeal Sumorum Pontificum is really not going to change anything on the ground. Because, ladies and gentlemen, if you've been paying attention for like any length of time since 2007 you'll realize that bishops have already been restricting the old mass. Uh, and I said, to, I said to John that Sumorum Pontificum is not even worth the paper that it's printed on, and I'll get into that later, because, uh, you know, all that it allows is it allows any priest to celebrate a private mass in the old rite to which people may show up. And uh, so more or less that equals uh, weekday masses. And, you know, okay, weekday masses are obviously good, but most people are not attending weekday masses. So let me pause here and, and, and reiterate again here. Uh, Sumorum Pontificum doesn't have anything to do with SSPX, Fraternity of St. Peter, Institute of Christ the King, Institute of the Good Shepherd, and it only has slightly a little bit to do with religious orders. Because, you know, there, most people in religious orders are doing private masses, or they're uh, a so-called Ecclesia Dei group, and uh, they're, they're conventual masses, the old mass. Now, Taylor Marshall got close to what I would call the John the Son of Thunder, or the Thunder and Lightning opinion, uh, but he didn't get there, and so I'll, do, I'll tell you about it. And it's namely that John and I agree and this comes from Peter Kwasniewski, he agrees as well, that the Old Mass is a different rite than the New Mass. And once you understand that, then you can begin to see why the bishops uh, don't want really anything to do with it. And why I think that uh, Sumarum Pontificum is not worth the paper that it's printed on. Um, and I say that because Sumorum Pontificum is a legal fiction, there is no such thing as the so-called extraordinary form. That's a lie. 
there is the new mass, the new rite, and the old rite. And so, to be honest, I think it would be a good thing if Pope Francis suppressed Sumorum Pontificum. As a matter of fact, I think the SSPX has been asking for Sumorum Pontificum to be suppressed or whatever, because it is an insult to the old mass. It says that the, the new mass is the ordinary form, and the old mass is the extraordinary form. But as Kwasniewski and, and Bishop Schneider have said, that's totally 100% wrong. That's 100% bogus, and it's a lie. Uh, the, the old mass is the ordinary form, and the new mass is the extraordinary form. If you even want to use that form, let me change it. I'll say it cor correctly here. The old mass is the Roman rite, and the Novus Ordo, the new mass, is some kind of Frankenstein rite. So they're 100% different rites. Uh, and I think that right now there's only a couple Benedict XVI supporters who actually believe this legal fiction of ordinary form, extraordinary form. I can tell you Bishop Schneider doesn't believe it. I've heard him in interviews with John Henry Weston and Taylor Marshall, and he denied it. He doesn't believe that. I don't even think Cardinal Burke believes it anymore. I've heard him. He doesn't use the word extraordinary form. He calls it, calls it the uh, usus antiqui or more ancient uh, rite of mass. As I said, Peter Kwasniewski doesn't believe in it. And so if Francis actually suppresses Sumorum Pontificum, he will remove this lie from the books. And uh, by him doing that, it'll give great glory to God, because God is the author of his truth. He's not the author of lie, and Sumorum Pontificum contains a lie when it says that there's two forms of the Roman rite, the so-called ordinary form and so-called extraordinary form. So that's my take on that. Take number two here is Sumorum Pontificum is a very weak document because it already fails to acknowledge that the bishop has 100% complete control of the situation of the Latin Mass in his diocese by canon law, but also in some way by intimidation. The canon law angle is that Sumorum Pontificum only allows a priest to celebrate in private without the bishop's permission. Let me repeat that. It's very important. What Sumorum Pontificum allows is for a priest to celebrate the Old Mass in private without the bishop's permission. So therefore, if he does a public Mass, he needs the bishop's permission. At least as I read it. I know the document says that he can do a private mass and have people there, but effectively that more or less means uh, a, a private mass is a weekday mass, and, and most people are interested in Sunday masses, as I said. So if a priest does a public mass, he needs the bishop's permission. In nearly all the dioceses, the bishops don't care about weekday masses, so they let those go. And I actually think that, as I said, that according to canon law, a daily Mass is a private Mass. But our problem is with the Sunday Mass. That's what people want. Now, keep in mind that canon law allows a priest to only celebrate one Mass a day. In the United States, the bishops have given blanket permission for two or three Masses per day from a priest without asking on a Sunday. Uh, and that's because of you know, you've got a parish to take care of or different locations. Sometimes that's a blanket for uh, an apostolate, which, for instance, would be approved by the bishop, and that would be a campus mass, a mass in jail, or a regularly scheduled Latin mass. But in order to add a mass to a Sunday schedule, you need the bishop's permission. At least that's the way it is in our diocese. So this is where Sumorum Pontificum is weak. The bishop has to give a priest permission to have an extra Mass, be a Latin Mass, so it's not like the priest on his own can just say, well, I'm at a Mass and it's going to be a Latin Mass. At least in our diocese, that has to be run through the bishop. He needs to know about what's going on because he wants to balance and make sure his priests are, are using their resources well. You know, In our diocese, we hardly have any priests, we have some priests that have four assignments. It's kind of a disaster of a situation. But, 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 but basically, this whole idea of Sumorum Pontificum is useless for the Sunday Mass. <laughs> and, 
And as I said to John, I said, how many, how many diocesan Sunday Latin masses are there even in our state of Pennsylvania? Because uh, that's where we live. And I said, let's look at this thing and see about Sunday Latin masses in Pennsylvania that are exercised according to Sumorum Pontificum. So that would be diocesans. You have to exclude the uh, Fraternity of St. Peter and Institute of Christ the King because they existed long before Sumorum Pontificum. Okay, so they don't even count. Now let's go and look at Pennsylvania and examine each diocese. And I think you'll find between zero and one diocesan Latin mass per diocese. Let's go through this alphabetically. Allentown Diocese has zero diocesan Latin masses on Sunday. They have one that's a fraternity of St. Peter. By the way, I'm talking about something that occurs every week here. Not one of these guys that's first Sunday or third Sunday and this basement and fourth Sunday down the hall in the broom closet or whatever. <laughs> so Al Allentown, zero diocesan masses. Altoona Johnstown has one diocesan Latin mass, and they have that because they don't have fraternity or Saint of St. Peter or Institute of Christ the King. It's celebrated by a religious priest. So, I don't know, does that even count as being a Sumorum Pontificum Mass? I don't, I don't know. Diocese of Erie has one Mass, and that's because they don't have fraternity or institute there. So that's a diocesan Mass. Greensburg has one Sunday Mass uh, done by a... Di they have a group of diocesans who do that Mass. They don't have fraternity or institute of Christ the King. Harrisburg is a, is a big exception because... They have Fraternity of St. Peter in Harrisburg, and then they have a, a Mass in Lancaster, which I believe is a diocesan Latin Mass. Diocese of Pittsburgh, zero diocesan Latin Masses. They have Institute of Christ the King over at Precious Blood Parish. Diocese of Erie has between one and two uh, diocesan Latin masses. They don't have fraternity, they don't have Institute of Christ the King, but they do have, uh, I guess it's one to two weeklies that are done by diocesans. Scranton has maybe one diocesan. There is a fraternity parish there in, in Scranton, St. Michael's, but they might also have one that is a, uh, a diocesan. And in Philadelphia, I did see that um, they have Conshohocken, and they maybe have, an, that's fraternity. There might be another one there that is diocesan. Uh, I'm not sure. I didn't write that down. So basically we're talking about zero to one weekly Sumorum Pontificum masses in these dioceses of Pennsylvania. So Sumorum Pontificum hardly even applies to this state. I mean, it makes no difference. And in the grand scheme of things, whether they're Sumorum or not, you have these established mass locations, which have hundreds of parishioners now going to these, these parishes where the Latin mass is. So no bishop in his right mind is going to go in there and kick that hornet's nest if Sumorum Pontificum is repealed. So I talked about point one, which was Sumorum's a legal fiction. Two, Sumorum is weak because it doesn't acknowledge that the bishop has complete control. And then point three, Taylor Marshall talked about this, and I really like his angle, that namely what Francis and the bad guys would like to do is push everybody, all these Latin mass tradies, into some sort of separated place, which is a ghetto or something apart from the diocesan structure. And the bishops would like this too, because they're sort of afraid of like a contamination effect, where... You get these diocesan priests who start saying the old mass, and then they like it, and um, for whatever reason that bothers them. I think it it basically uh, creates a doubt in everybody's mind about the goodness of the Novus Ordo. So I think these diocesan bishops would, would like to prevent their priests from saying the old mass. But basically, you know, they're acknowledging that <laughs> the old mass is a different rite. And I think that if Francis were to push, and the diocesan bishops were to push everybody into this separate structure or ghetto or whatever you want to call it, I think it would be better off because it would be an acknowledgement that the old mass and the new mass are different rites of mass. We, they have completely different calendars, uh, a different liturgy, different vestments, 
a different language, different lectionary. All seven sacraments are different, um, a different ethos of the liturgy. We did a complete show upon this. And, and I think that if you had the, the old mass pushed into this separate rite, separate structure, we could have our own bishops, our own chapels, and be away from the diocesan structure. Um, effectively, it would be sort of like a, uh, well, I mean, an apostolic administration. But, for instance, you have the Anglican ordinariate uh, would be something similar to what I'm thinking of. Uh, SSPX, obviously, is something totally outside the diocesan structure, but more or less functions like it's within the diocesan structure. And then, you know, here in Pennsylvania, we have all these separate uh, Eastern Catholic churches, Ukrainian, Byzantine, uh, Ruthenian, Byzantine, which is just plain old what people call the Byzantine. Um, there's probably a Maronite. I don't know if there's Maronite in Pennsylvania. But anyway, some of these other rites, which have totally different bishops, totally different clergy, totally different parishes, completely independent from the Roman bishops, don't even need to talk to the Roman bishop. Nobody cares about him, and nobody cares about the Byzantines. <laughs> and uh, they work, they live perfectly happy, you know. In some places, there's a Roman church on one corner, and Caddy Corner, there's a Byzantine church. And they know some people, we're all Catholic, but we get along, but we don't bother each other. Nobody cares about what this priest is doing or who their bishop is or any of that stuff. So that being said, uh, Taylor Marshall thinks the bad guys uh, would like to get all these tradies into this, into this uh, separate situation, a separate structure. And then he thinks that like a python, Francis and the, the, the modernists are going to squeeze this this uh, sack of of traditionalists uh, so that they don't get new bishops or new priests. But me personally, I don't think there's any way the bad guys will be able to do that. Uh, it's too big. There's too many good bishops um, who would do ordinations for the, for the traditionalist movement, so to speak. So I don't think the bad guys would be able to, uh, to, to like a python, squeeze the life out of them. And... If Francis and the bad guys try that, I think that's, of course, going to backfire. If you free tradies from the diocesan structure, it also frees them from the modernism of weak bishops. And once you get them out from under those bishops, they can really flourish and set up mass communities where they want and have a better schedule. And then, of course, you'd be able to incarnate priests. You could poach diocesan priests away and... Um, so it, I envision it sort of being like a, um, the apostolic administration of Campos in Brazil, but it would be for the whole world where you would have this parallel jurisdiction. Now, I bet you that the SSPX is 100% cheering on this idea right now. You know that they've never agreed with the so-called extraordinary form. And uh, they're probably looking at this situation right now and saying, ha ha, told you so. This is why we didn't make a deal with Rome. Do you see why we're outside the canonical structure? Because you can't trust modernist bishops. You can't trust modernist Rome. The Novus Ordo is illegitimate. Vatican II is wrong on, the, on three different subjects. And you have a completely new orientation. And so if, if Francis gets froggy and tries to do this, SSPX is going to look like the golden child in this situation. They're going to look like they're 100% right. And I hope, you know, they're pretty good about not pointing their finger and saying, ha ha, told you so, and being obnoxious. Uh, they, would, they would welcome everybody in, um, into, the, into, the, into the swimming pool or the hot tub, so to speak. Now, the last thing I wanted to mention was, Again, with the headline with Return to Tradition and Rate Chaley and everything, the Chicken Littles are saying, It's the end of the Latin Mass! <laughs> They're in tears, you know, crying under the bed. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, it ain't gonna happen. And here's why. Because you've already got Fraternity of St. Peter and Institute of Christ the King. They're huge. They have plenty of money. Uh, Bishop Snyder has already said that if the Pope tries to suppress the Latin Mass, you ignore him and you resist. 
He said that in an interview with, I think it was Taylor Marshall or John Henry West, and you can easily, easily go and find that interview with Bishop Schneider. So he's calling for resistance if the Pope tries to get froggy. And of course, I think you'd have Mueller and Burke. As soon as you ban, if you were to ban the Latin Mass, you'd have a ton of bishops who would be out there, especially like the good, you know, rightward leaning USCCB bishops like Gomez and uh, Pop Rocky, Sample. A lot of these guys, uh, Strickland, they already have celebrated the old Mass occasionally. I think that they would just to stick their uh, give the, the the middle finger to to Berkey and the modernists. I think they'd be like, well, you know, I'm going to do a Latin Mass every Sunday. Then I'll show you. Um, of course, you got Gracida who says he only says the old Mass. Vigano only says the old Mass. Schneider is probably pretty much close to only saying the old Mass. I don't know what Burke does, but you get the idea. It it couldn't work. It, it would not work. Bergy doesn't have that much power to do this. And um, and the other thing it would do, it would just push everybody to the SSPX. And you want to see them, you'd have a ton of priests probably even join an SSPX. Fraternity guys, it'd be like, well, this is a cheat. You're cheating us. This is a raw deal. I'm done with this. So you'd have masses in barns, masses in the, the, the Holiday Inn, the Ramada, uh, masses and basements, it'd be like the old days, and uh, you'd have revolution. I mean, maybe even uh, bishops would get kidnapped, and the chanceries would get burned down, or or tradies would occupy uh, parishes like they did with uh, St. Nicholas de Chardonnay in France. Um, so I, I just don't see that coming. That's like fan fiction, entertaining conspiracy theory, that sort of stuff. So, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Ryan the Retrograde bringing you this special report, emergency report, to, to calm all your fears. If there's any doom trads out there who are about to hop off the building, maybe slit their wrists in the bathtub or whatever, don't do it. Say, say your prayers, relax, everything's going to be okay. I got it all under control. And we are the laity, and we will not be silent.